Designing a West Coast drive from scratch starts with deciding what characteristics the robot needs to have. A typical West Coast drive can be described as having the tank drive slash skid steer build typically built with aluminum tubing, but sheet metal frames are also common. A typical West Coast drive from Yeti uses cantilevered live hex axles spinning in bearings with wheels simply placed on the hex axle with a hub mounted to the wheel. Some wheels have a hex broached hole built into the rim and we love these. Based on the style of the drivetrain, we use wheels and parts available to us through West Coast Products and Vex Pro. To help teams with the design, we will walk through what we do to decide our design for the final drive system. Again, this is our process and yours may vary. We are always improving and changing, so this video is a compilation of what we have learned since 2015 using the system and by watching other teams be successful with it. First, we need to analyze the trade-offs with robot characteristics. Pushing power and top speed characteristics are the first thing to look at. Flat field games will generally require a good amount of both. Higher speeds reduce cycle times, and torque is needed for pushing matches while defending or being defended. Many obstacles on the field reduce the necessity of a really fast robot. If there isn't much room to go fast and the robot must turn suddenly, at high speeds, the robot may fall over if stopped abruptly. Having a small robot versus a tall robot is another consideration. This can depend on which scoring elements are determined to be most viable. 2018 is a great example of this. Some robots found great success in scoring on the scale, while others found successes in scoring on the switches. The switch robots were generally smaller, faster, and were better at playing defense. The scale robots were so much slower, much larger, and would often have a hard time defending their home switch. Smaller robots also have many disadvantages. They can be lighter than other robots and easily pushed around. However, they are less prone to tipping over. The taller your robot is, the more it will rock on West Coast Drive if you don't make considerations in the design. Both tall robots and short robots have advantages and disadvantages. Again, this can depend on which game is being played. A team may choose to use a shifting gearbox as opposed to a single speed gearbox in order to enhance the traits of the drivetrain. Shifters allow the robot to switch between different gear ratios. A high gear ratio will allow the robot to move faster while the low gear ratio will allow the robot to have more torque, pushing power, and less speed. While shifters are useful, they require pneumatics and adds a little extra weight. As such, it is only recommended to use them when necessary. Yeti uses pneumatic dog shifting gearboxes, which work well with West Coast Drive and allow quick and precise shifting while the robot is in motion. If you do not want pneumatic shifters, servo shifters exist, but there are extra design considerations and are something we as a team choose not to utilize. There are a few types of wheels that can be used in a West Coast Drive system. Pneumatic wheels are the heaviest choice, but they provide a built-in suspension. Pneumatic wheels can be useful in games with rough terrain, such as the 2016 game. Other types of wheels, like slick rubber Colson wheels and traction wheels, are lighter than pneumatic wheels, but are rigid in structure. Certain plastic wheels may crack if they hit a bump at a large enough speed. If the drivetrain only consists of the non-holonomic wheels mentioned above, a drop center is required in order to reduce scrubbing. If Omni wheels are used on the outer four corner axles, a drop center is not necessary since the Omnis do not scrub at all like other wheels. If you are using a very tall robot design, using Omnis on the corner wheels would create a more stable robot without a drop center. It is not recommended to use McConnell wheels on a West Coast Drive train since McConnell wheels do not work as intended. The number of wheels and where they are placed can have an effect on the robot performance relative to its interaction with the field. The robot must be designed to avoid getting stuck on field platforms or game pieces where they exist, so special precautions need to be taken. JVN has an excellent blog article discussing this for the 2018 game and a reference document from the 2015 game that shows how to avoid this issue. This is a crucial step to designing any FRC drive system. At this point in the process, you should have identified what goals you have for the current FRC season 
and what your robot needs to do to win matches. You should have an idea of whether your robot is going to be tall or short regardless of whether or not you know what mechanisms are going to be on top of the robot. If you have obstacles, you should be aware of what wheel diameter and spread of wheels you can get away with to avoid being stuck on the field. To complete this part, go ahead and create a mock-up now using CAD or some simple prototype to check this geometry. Yeti uses a type of sketch block to do this in SolidWorks. The type of wheel is something you can experiment with, but once you drop the center, there is no going back on the drive rails without costly rework. So you need to decide if you want to use holonomic corner omni drive with tractions in the middle or use all regular wheels with a drop center before moving on. This is the end of part one of six. If you have any questions, please comment below and we can help clarify. In the next video, we will teach you how to quantify the design considerations above using some math in Select Argearbox.